What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. We are Sister Shani. For Wanda, she's not feeling good today. All right, we certainly pray for Wanda, uh, who's not feeling well today, that the Lord will touch her body. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that's a good thing that uh, we'll request that prayer for the Lord to touch her body. All right, Sister Jackie. Hallelujah. All right, I have a prayer for all of the people in the city of Erie that are on love. Yes. 
Yes. Amen. So yes, let us certainly pray uh, for those that are addicted uh, to drugs and alcohol and, and uh, all other addictions. Uh, some people have sex, sex addictions and things as such, gambling addictions. So let us pray for all addictions um, that the Lord will uh, break those yokes and destroy those very things. I remember, I never will forget it. I was uh, down at uh, Hammond Hospital and um, we had uh, taken somebody down there um, that was uh, withdrawing from drugs and a uh, police officer was involved because it was a, a 302 at that particular time in an in involuntary petition. And I'll never forget what he said. He said that uh, generally he's seen it through his uh, experience as a police officer, those that um, are able to break those habits and break those chains, those are the ones that come to the Lord. He said, those that come to the Lord get saved. I mean, never forget it because it kind of stunned me that the police officer would say that. He said, those that come to church get saved and stay in the church are the ones that are able to break those habits and destroy those yokes. And that is so true, so true. We need the Lord on our side. It's a spiritual thing. And we need the Lord to help us to fight our spiritual battles. Amen. Amen. First lady. Amen. Hey, glory. Amen. We want to remember Sister Stephanie Lockett. Lofton. Lofton. All right. I didn't hear you quite right. Yeah. Remember Sister Stephanie Lofton and her family. That the Lord will bless her. Thank you, Jesus. And we certainly do want to pray. All right, let the church stand. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We certainly do thank you, and we praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, Bob, you've blessed each and every one of us as we endure hardness as good soldiers as Jesus Christ. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known. We ask you, Lord, that you bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come to hinder us. And, Lord, keep us in the safety of your arms. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request, destroy addictions of any hand or any kind in the name of Jesus. Remember those that are going through in their bodies and their spirit, send forth healing, send forth deliverance in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless us financially as well. And, Lord, that we lift up the name of Jesus everywhere we go and magnify your holy and precious name. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> ah, thank you, Lord. Sister uh, Lottie, will you come in for a moment? Amen. We certainly do thank God uh, for our Bible study. And our study this time is going is continue, continuation of um, our series that we're doing is a series on wisdom. Yes, thank you, Lord. And uh, we give you a little quiz. Um, uh, from last week so that we can uh, work this out. You need a pencil, you need a, you need a, you got your little uh, something to write something down with. Amen. Uh, get a young man one, a lot of, what are you doing? <laughs> Give everybody one, everybody one, yeah, amen. Thank you, Lord. And uh, as you, we get ready to answer these questions here, it's, it's good for us to, uh, Pay attention, and it's good for us to glean information. So as you, I want you to write down some of these answers here on our quiz, and uh, coming out of the book of Psalms, Psalms uh, chapter number one. And uh, give you a few minutes, and it says, the first question is, based on what we were being taught on last week, what are the three learning strategies of godly wisdom? What are the three learning strategies of, of learning godly wisdom? What are the three learning standards, or what are the three strategies to learning godly wisdom? And I want to, uh, I want to see what we remember. Amen. And I know that uh, some people uh, will pay.
paying attention, and even at home, uh, watching and reviewing uh, the Bible studies, so uh, nobody's exempt. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And, this, and uh, the second part of that question is, according to Proverbs 1 and 5, the scripture says, a wise man will blank and in uh, and blank learning. <clears throat> According to Proverbs 1 and 5, a wise man will blank and blank learn. Amen. Amen. And, uh, the next one says that according to Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Blank. But fools will despise blankety blank. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Then we have it. Our next one says, according to Proverbs 2 and 6, where does wisdom, knowledge, and understanding come from? Where does wisdom, knowledge, and understanding come from? And we have here our next question. It says, according to James 1 and 5, if any man, if any of you lack wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, who should you ask? If you lack wisdom, who should you ask? And how is wisdom given? And after it's given, what don't the Lord do? What doesn't he do? And then continuing on with James uh, in that vein, probably one in six, and he says, how should you ask for wisdom? How should you ask for wisdom? It says, according to James 1 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from where? Where does it come from? Where does it come from? Thank you, Jesus. And then looking at our next question, kind of like a little essay question, but a little shortened and duration here, kind of pulling together what we've learned. It says, describe in your own words the process to obtain God's or the wisdom of God. Describe in your own words how to obtain the wisdom of God. finished. Thank you, Jesus. Describe in your own words <coughs> the process. God has a process to obtain the, his wisdom. Hmm. Our next question is identify, identify the main areas of your life you want to obtain God's wisdom. What are the areas associated in your own life? No right or wrong answer, but you know yourself. What areas in your life do you want to obtain godly wisdom? And certainly these are some questions that ought to be pondered as you move forward. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The next question is, is how would your life improve? How would your life improve?
by obtaining God's wisdom in your identified areas, in those areas that you identify, how would your life improve? As we, as we come together, um, it's important, it's important for us to glean from our Bible studies and in and, and gleaning from them to apply God's word to our lives. That's what James, I found out through, through, through studying uh, on this particular uh, subject that the book of James is considered a book of wisdom. I didn't realize that. I, didn't, I learned that today, that the book of James is considered a book of wisdom in the New Testament. Uh, in the Old Testament, it's Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the book of Job. The book of Job, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes are considered the books of wisdom in the uh, Old Testament. And in the New Testament, the book of James is considered a book of wisdom. And it kind of fits. If you study the book of James, he's straightforward. It gives you practical living advice. And uh, James hits it on the head. He says, receive with meekness the engrafted word of God so that you are able to grow thereby. Amen? And God's word is wisdom. And wisdom is defined as the ability to apply knowledge, apply knowledge and understanding to your uh, daily problems, to solve problems, or to accomplish goals. And when you, when you understand that, that that's what wisdom is, it's a skill to be able to take what you know and understand and apply it to the situation so that you can avoid trouble, so that you can overcome trouble, and so that you can meet particular goals. A lot of people fail because they fail to apply and attain the wisdom that is given by God to, 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 to utilize to be successful. A lot of people achieve great things because they are applying God's word to their daily lives. And what, 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 the Lord that laid on my heart and on my heart was with the wisdom that he gives you, it insulates you. It insulates your life. Have you ever uh, seen a lot of people that have a lot of ups and downs and a lot of turnarounds uh, to go to live, they live life hard. The reason why they live life hard is because they don't uh, stay within the guidelines that God uh, uh, has established. A lot of people, uh, I work at the Erie County Prison, and, and a lot of people are in and out of that jail. And, and you, you listen to their story, uh, it's foolishness. They, they've done some unwise things to cause them to be recidivists, to keep coming back to living life hard. And, and when, when you go to a, a jail, you can be out three or six months and you're establishing things, you're getting things going, you get your job, you, you may get you an apartment, you may get some, uh, 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 some benefits going or some, some whatever going, but once you do something that's, that's, that's uh, foolish, that lines you back up in jail, you lose all of that. You lose all of it, then you gotta get out and try to start all over. Stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. And, and people that don't go to jail when, if they are not committing crime, but they're just not making the right decisions on a regular basis. You lose some things. You stop, start, stop, start. Uh, you stop, start, stop, start. Uh, and, 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 you, and, and, and you expose yourself to trouble. But the wisdom of God insulates you from that trouble. And gives you what you need to be able to handle life and life and its pressures. Amen? So we see here then, let us, let us go quickly and answer these questions. All right? What are the three uh, 
three strategies to uh, learning godly wisdom. What, is, what does Solomon say that the three strategies are? Anybody got that answer? All righty. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Henceforth, that's good. That's good. Why we should have a pop quiz. Amen. All right. Solomon says that uh, the three strategies to learning godly wisdom is to obtain knowledge, to obtain understanding, and to be able to receive or process that information. So it's to know, to perceive, or, or, or understand, same difference of the word, and to receive. You've got to uh, gain the facts, you've got to be able to er interpret the facts or understand them, and then you've got to receive it. And when you receive it, it's you applying it. That's, that's how you know you've received it. You apply it. All right? Uh, according to Proverbs 1 and 5, a, a wise man will what? Hear. Hear. All right. And do what? Increase. Increase learning. Amen. A wise person will hear with the intent to obey, and they will become wiser. Because, because wisdom is a continual cycle. The more, uh, what, the, based on what you receive, uh, God gives you more when you apply it. You get more enlightenment as you follow on. The path of a just man gets brighter and brighter as they uh, continue on. So it's a continual cycle. It builds on each other. Like, like mathematics. Uh, uh, they teach you addition. Then they teach you subtraction. And then you're able to do multiplication. And then you're able to do algebra. Amen? It builds. It builds. All right? So, uh, according to Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Uh, knowledge. knowledge. Amen. The fear of the Lord. Now, you give yourself a big fat X right there. <laughs> now, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Amen? Knowledge. And knowledge is the accumulation of the facts. You, 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 in order to know something primarily through uh, God, you've got to read the Bible. You've got to study the Bible. And when I say study, it's a systematic approach. Amen? It's not just a willy-nilly, picking out something, opening the Bible, and studying it. You study the Bible based on what you're going through, based on what you're being tried with. Amen? And, and then you're uh, God will give you information and then you apply it to your life. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right, notice, uh, according to uh, Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wow. Knowledge. But fools despise what? Wisdom. wisdom and... Now, fools hate wisdom. They hate it. They hate it. They, don't, they want to live life willy-nilly. They don't want to stay within the bounds. Now, a, 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 a foolish person is like that. They despise it. They hate wisdom. Notice, not only wisdom, but what? Instruction. Instruction means correction. They hate to be corrected. You can't hate to be corrected and walk with God. Amen? Hallelujah. Because God, because we're going to make some mistakes, aren't we? Amen. Amen. And we need God to correct us. We want God to correct us. Amen. All right. Now notice then. Uh, according to James 1 and 5, if any man lack what wisdom, what should he do? Ask, Ask of God. God. Amen. Who giveth wisdom, how? Liberally. And he what? Upbraideth not. What does that word upbraideth mean? 
Uh -huh. He won't withhold it, and he won't get upset when you ask him. Amen? God wants you to have it. God wants you to live life uh, uh, successful. That's why he's the source. Uh, and he wants to give it to you liberally. Amen? All right. And he doesn't get upset with you when you ask him for it. But you have to ask for wisdom how? In faith. In faith, nothing what? Wavering. You can't be wishy-washy. Amen? And when you ask God for wisdom, you got to believe it, you got to receive it, and you can't be wishy-washy. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He'll give it to you. According to James 7, 1 and 17, every good gift and perfect gift comes from where? Above. Above. Amen? Comes from God. Wisdom comes from God. Amen? Oh, there's some devilish wisdom out there, isn't there? Uh, you got to avoid that. Uh, a lot of people don't avoid that. But you got to avoid the devilish wisdom. Um, I learned, I learned, the Lord was really showing me some things. That, that, um, uh, uh, I already knew that the Proverbs was a contrast between good and evil, between wise and and uh, 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 the Bible calls an unwise person a fool. Amen? So, so you want to avoid fools. You want to avoid being a fool. <laughs> Amen? Thank you. So, so I'm not saying this in a despairing way, but when you see somebody acting like a fool, you got to turn from them. Amen? Because evil communication corrupts good manners. Am I right? And when you see yourself acting like a fool, you got to turn from that. Am I right? Thank you, Lord. Be aware of it and turn from it. You don't want to be classified. The Bible calls some people stupid. Amen? You don't want to be stupid. Stupid person is an unlearned person. Amen? Now, now, uh, well, I also want to say this, that being an unlearned person, being a fool, is not a negative connotation because uh, in this respect, we all at some times were foolish. We all at some times are unlearned. Amen? But don't be, as the scripture says, uh, 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 never always learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Amen? If, if, if you don't know something, you're classified as a fool. But, but don't remain that way. Amen? Don't be unlearned. Uh, learn from God. Amen? So, so what, what, what are you saying, Bishop Quinn? I'm saying that, 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 that just because you don't know, don't get yourself down on that. You learn. You receive. Amen? Because in some areas, in, in, uh, uh, people know more than others. Amen? Uh, but they learn. They call, they call Peter and James, Peter and John, I'm sorry, uh, uh, ignorant and unlearned men. And because they stood up and they, was, they had been with Jesus and they were, they were preaching Christ and he be baffled those Pharisees and Sadducees. The reason why they called them uh, ignorant and unlearned is because they weren't rabbis and they knew the depths of the scriptures. Amen. And what caused them to know the depths of the scriptures is because they had been with Jesus. Amen. Oh, let me spend some time with Jesus. <laughs> all right. All right. Where, where we at? Okay, it comes from above. Okay, describe in your own words the process to obtain wisdom. And for keeping in with brevity of time, because I want to get to our lesson. Thank you, Lord. Um, I did it myself, and this is what I came up with. Um, describe in your own words the process to obtain wisdom. First, you have to study God's word. 
uh, then you've got to be come aware of what God requires. Amen? When you're studying the Word of God, you become, you do it to become aware of what God requires. Amen? And then you receive what God has, what you have found out, the revelation, and you apply it. Amen? You apply it. You do what God's Word has said. There's a lot of people, uh, uh, there's a lot of people that know the Word of God, can quote it better than you and I. But when it comes down to applying it, they miss the mark. Amen? A lot of us here, we know God's Word. But when it comes down to applying it to the situation, we miss the mark. Then, and there's various reasons for that. <laughs> and, you know, the scripture tells us, well, one of the main reasons is, is because we're proud. Huh? We're proud. We're stubborn. And the Bible says God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So when I, when I don't, when I don't uh, uh, apply God's word to the situation, I'm still expecting God to bless me. That's foolish. That's foolish. You, we still want the blessing without the work. That's not how it works. <laughs> because you, you receive, you, whatever you sow, that which shall you also reap. That's a principle of God. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, let's move on. Uh, so so, so the, the, the process that I outlined was you study the word, uh, you become aware of what God requires, you receive it and apply uh, what God has said to that situation, and then also to, in the process, you're praying and asking God. You're praying and asking God. Amen? You're acknowledging Him in all of your ways for the primary purpose that He can direct your path. You want God to lead you. You want God to guide you. Amen? And notice what we've already studied up there, that, that wisdom comes from above. And he said, if, any, if you lack it, let him do what? Ask of God. Amen? Hallelujah, my God. Now, notice then, uh, I said identify the main areas of your life uh, you want to obtain God's wisdom. And that's subjective, and I base this, these answers on myself. I want to obtain God's wisdom in leadership, uh, in ministry, which includes preaching and teaching and serving. And I want to uh, obtain God's wisdom in finances. Amen? I want to be a good steward. Uh, I want to obtain God's wisdom. Uh, this is me. Uh, because I want to seek the kingdom of God. Understand kingdom principles. I was going on. My God. <laughs> the more, more I was outlining that, the more I realized I need God's help. Uh, we need God's help, don't we? Amen. Amen. Uh, the next one says, how would your life improve uh, by applying God's wisdom in these identified answers, I said in leadership, I'll be able to help people accomplish my purpose and my assignment. In ministry, I would be more effective. I'm always critiquing myself because I want to be more effective. Amen? And I got a lot of room. I got a lot of room to grow. And in finances, I want to be a good steward, able to bless uh, uh, the people, able to bless different ministries, and I want to be able to help some families. Amen? So, so those were my answers. So I hope you're honest with your answers. So if you are, then this, this moving forward will help you to accomplish those goals. This, this exercise wasn't what we call perfunctory or, or meaningless. It has meaning. It's necessary. Amen? so that we can glean and obtain uh, what we want from God so that we'll be able to grow. Amen? Uh, I want to grow. Don't you want to grow? Amen. I'm tired of going around the same mountain. 
Amen? Uh, God got so much for us. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, and if we just uh, apply what God's word has said, we can attain it. Amen? All right. Y'all with me? All right. So then, then sign your name to the bottom of that. Hey, and put a date on it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. All right, y'all ready? We got another, we got another about, give me another half hour with you, and I'll let you go. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right, thank you, Sister Jackie. I'm glad somebody with me. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. All right, all right. Let's go over then to uh, the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter number three. Stay there primarily on today. That's going to be a quiz next week. All right? All right. Huh? Hey, man. I know. It. I know. I should have tweeted it out. Yes. Uh, Proverbs chapter number. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you some stars. Next week I can put it on your papers. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter number three. And our subject, you know, for this, 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 this Bible series, um, we're going to have two more. It's called the School of Wisdom. Amen? And even how the uh, book of Proverbs are laid out, it's laid out so that you could read uh, a chapter every day uh, per month. So there's 31 of them. Amen? And it's styled like that. God foresaw it. Amen? So that you can read a chapter every month. And you just don't read it every month uh, uh, in September and then forget about the rest of the year. You go back over it. Amen. You start, it's styled in such, it's written in such a way that, that you read it every month, uh, uh, one, one book every day, uh, uh, continually. Amen. Continually until when? Till you obtain all of its precepts. Uh, till you obtain all of the wisdom that's in it. And you will never exhaust God's precepts and his wisdom. So it's a continuation. It's written uh, uh, primarily also to young people, amen, so that they can start their life with a solid foundation to avoid pitfalls and situations. When I was reading the one for today, uh, I had to give me a little chuckle out because uh, I saw something I had never seen before. It, it, it outlines a scenario wherein uh, a young man is uh, being enticed by a woman. And y'all like stories like that, don't you? <laughs> and, 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 and how it's written, the, con the, the commentary is written uh, from like a third person perspective. It's, it's telling you uh, as the reader, uh, it's taking you on a journey. It says, uh, 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 I, I was looking outside and, and this is what I saw. You know, you got to read it for yourself. This is what I saw. And it kind of it kind of draws you into the story. Amen. And I've never uh, read that one like that before. It draws you in to kind of see what's going on, what the scenario is, what the trap is. Amen. God wants you to see the traps and the pitfalls and things like that and what to avoid. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of stuff we go through can be avoided. Am I right? All right. All right, Pastor, you got to move on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So in Proverbs chapter number three, you got it? All right. Um, Proverbs chapter number three, it deals with the way it's outlined. It's, it's outlined that it gives you a, a, a command and then it gives you the promise. 
It gives you a command, and then it gives you the promise. That's how uh, Proverbs uh, chapter number three is outlined. All right? So um, the odd numbers are the commands, and the even numbers are generally the, the, the promises or the blessings. Amen? Y'all with me? All right. Um, uh, so, so let me ask you this question. Because it's, it's styled like that, what is God trying to teach us? Because he had the right to take the time to put down the command and to put down right underneath it the promise. What is God trying to teach us? What's the, what's, the, what's the principle of that? Obedience. Obedience. Be more, be more fluid with that. He's trying to, that's true. He's trying to teach us obedience, but what? Just be practical. What is he saying? Huh? Yeah, if you obey God's commandments, you will receive the promise. Very simple. It's not, it's not nothing uh, uh, rocket science. Huh? God is, he's, he's training us. He's teaching us that. If you keep his commands, then you will receive his promise. That's what that teaches us. Amen? It teaches whatsoever a man soweth, that shall be also what? Reap. Reap. And that, and that scripture there is not totally negative. Because if you're sowing positive, you're going to reap positive. If you're sowing negative, you're going to reap negative. Amen? So it's a neutral type of scripture based on your own conduct, your own behavior. Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, so we see here. He says, um, uh, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my word, keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So notice, this is God's command. Notice the first one out the gate. The first one out the gate is, my son, forget not my law. Amen? The first one out the gate, get you some knowledge. Uh, God wants you to read his word so you can gain you some knowledge. Amen? And he wants you to get it in your heart so that you don't forget it. People, it's easy to forget things when, when we are, are not involved with it. It's like a password. Uh, if you don't use a password every day, you'll tend to forget it a month later. You'll be scratching your head. What, what's the password? Why? Because you have not been utilizing it and using it on a daily basis. Same way with the Word of God. If you're not in God's Word, learning, learning and studying God's Word, you'll forget it. The Bible says you'll let these things slip. Amen? All right, now notice what he said. He said, uh, uh, notice, he said, but let thine heart, let your heart, amen, keep my commandments. Now, you need to underline that word heart there. Uh, uh, it's, it's, either, either, there's an important reason why he said heart. And when you begin to understand what the heart is, the heart is the, the core of a person. It, it involves your will, your intellect, your emotions, all of that, your, 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 your senses, your, your ability to perceive uh, knowledge and understanding. It's who you are. It's your core person. Amen? Now notice what he said. He said, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Let, let, let your total being, your core person of who you are, your will, your emotions, everything has to line up with the word of God. Amen? Huh? According to to God's truth. Now, let me say this. Uh, um, a lot of people are driven 
by their emotions. They're driven by their, their desires. God does not want you to be driven by your emotions or your desires. Your emotions and your desires, they will deceive you. God wants you to operate according to truth. Amen? To his word. What's, what, what are the facts? Like uh, Sergeant, uh, I think it was Sergeant Friday in Dragnet. Sure some of y'all remember Dragnet? And, he's, and he said, when he was interviewing the lady, he said, nothing but the facts, ma'am. What's the facts? Amen? God wants you to, to, to be, make your decisions based on facts. That's why he said, James, be slow to speak, swift to hear, and slow to wrath. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Huh? Hallelujah. Now, um, um, <laughs> I was uh, watching uh, a movie yesterday. It was uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes. It was that new one with the girl. He got the girl in it. It's supposed to be his sister. And, and it struck me. Um, uh, he was he was helping her to solve a problem, and the girl got all emotion emotional. And he said he brought he brought it to her attention. He said your 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 emotions in this situation are, are useless. Amen. I mean, you what's what's you doing? Getting all upset, getting all angry, getting all frustrated. Then based by uh, making decisions, he said he said that's useless. Uh, why? Because. It, 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 it negates the facts. It negates the truth. You follow me? I want to base my decisions on truth. And that truth is the word of God. Just because you, you do something wrong to me, I get angry and I respond. I want to respond in truth. Amen? I got I to gotta understand the wisdom of God. The wrath of a man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wrath is an emotion. It's a feeling. Amen? A, 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 a strong one. And if I operate in it, what, is, what does the wisdom say? It worketh not the righteousness of God. I can't perform what God has called right while I'm angry and upset. Amen? It will hinder me. Y'all with me? All right. Now notice. Hey, glory. Um, um, so, so that when he talks about the heart, he's talking about uh, your your whole being, uh, who you truly are, being subject to God and His Word. God wants that. Everything. He wants your emotions. He wants your, your, your affections. Uh, he wants your desires. He wants your thinking. Everything. To be lined up with his word. So that word heart there, it literally encompasses your whole being. Amen? Your whole being Everything about you has to line up with the word of God. Y'all with me? All right, now notice what he said. Uh, and it has to line up with God's word and his instructions. Notice what he says. My son, forget not my law. Don't forget God's law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Your heart is your core being, everything that you are, your will, your desires, your emotions, everything. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice, if you do that, it says, here's the promise. For length of days, long life, and peace shall be the what? Added to you. So we know what a uh, length of days is. We know what a long life is. But let's talk about what peace is. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That, that word peace comes from a word that means shalom. Amen. Like heart encompasses everything about you, peace encompasses everything about you. And 
And what I mean by that, peace deals with uh, uh, your health. When, when you keep God's word, you, you, you be at peace. That means you'll be healthy. That means you'll be free uh, from, the, from, from threat. You'll be free from need because he had promised to supply what? All your needs. That's peace. And, and uh, it, uh, uh, you'll be fulfilled. Uh, if you keep God's commandments, you won't, you'll be fulfilled. You won't walk, wander around this life like aimlessly, like what's my purpose? What, what's going on? God will fill you. Uh, you'll, be, you'll have a fulfilled life. And that's what peace means. It means you are being content. You'll be prosperous. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and you'll go through all of this only in the way that God can provide. Now, only God can provide the peace that I'm talking to you about. Jesus said, the, my peace I leave with you. Uh, not as the world gives you peace, give I unto you. He said in the world you're going to have what? Tribulation. That's, 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 that's revelation. You can't, you can't uh, find the peace that or the shalom we're talking about here in the world. Uh, you can't find this in a man. You can't find this in a woman. You can't find this in a bank account. Uh, in substances. Thank you, Lord. You can't find that. There's billionaires shoot themselves in the head. Uh, live unsuccessful lives. Hallelujah. With, without, without the peace of God. Um, you need God's peace. You can be, uh, 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 let me say it this way. You can have none of those things and still have the peace of God. Hallelujah. Uh, reigning in your life. Uh, and it passes all understanding. Have you ever, I, 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 I'm speaking of my own experience. I, I have been literally uh, 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 walking around and, 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 and so to speak, minding my own business. And all of a sudden, I feel the peace of God coming all over me. Huh? And, I, and then I stop and I pause and I say, Lord, I thank you. Huh? Hallelujah, I thank you. Have you ever experienced that huh? peace huh? that flows like a river? Hallelujah. That's because you have to walk in his commands. You have to keep the word of God. God's word insulates you. It protects you. It gives you that peace. Uh, it gives you that joy. And that, that's what shalom is. Uh, it encompasses your total well-being. Hallelujah. Uh, we want that, don't we? Uh, so therefore, I have to not forget his law. I got to not uh, keep it in my, I got to keep his commands in my heart. For he says, length of days, Long life and peace shall be what? Added to thee. God is going to add it huh? only to your life if you do what, what verse number one says. Amen? All right. Now, let's move on. Uh, verse number three says, he says, what? Let not what? Mercy and truth what? Forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, and write them where? All right, so what that verse is saying is, is that uh, live this life showing mercy to people. Don't be quick to rush to judgment on others. Amen? Notice what he says. Let not mercy and truth what? Forsake thee. So, so you ought to guide your life by showing mercy and focusing in on the truth. Don't be, don't be basing your decisions on your emotions and your feelings. Amen? And then don't, you're dealing with people, you're dealing with situations, don't be quick to rush to judgment. Amen? The wisdom is in showing mercy. That should be, uh, he's saying that's a guiding principle of our lives. Jesus, he said, uh, only the devil comes to kill, steal, and what? Destroy. The Lord says, I come that you might have what? Life. 
and that what? More abundantly. And for an individual to have it, let me say it this way. We're all guilty huh, of trespasses and sin, and we deserve death. We need mercy to live. Huh? Hallelujah. We, there's, there's nothing to kill an individual, huh? but it's something to show them mercy so that they can live. Huh? God had mercy on you so that you can live and not die. The Bible says you are saved by grace huh? and that through faith and that's a gift from God. Huh? And that's why God shows us mercy so we can live. We need to show others mercy so that they can live, not die. God can't get no glory out of you from the grave. Huh? But God gets glory when you receive his mercy and be built up on your most holy faith. When you, when you, when you receive the joy and the salvation that is in Jesus Christ, that's what makes God glad. That's what makes God strong. Hallelujah. He's a God of a second chance. That's why he said, goodness and mercy huh, shall follow you all the days of your life. That come on, shut. Hallelujah. And because it's following us, I don't want to cut it off. Woo, I'm getting a deep revelation. Some of us are experiencing hard times because we cut off the mercy by not showing others mercy. He said, blessed are the merciful, for you shall receive mercy. Amen? Hallelujah. So we got to walk according to truth. Notice what he said. Uh, Let not mercy and truth what? My God, don't, don't, don't be a uh, uh, stiff neck and rebellious. Don't be an individual that's so hard, huh? That won't show individuals mercy. Even in the prayer, the Lord's prayer, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Now, if I if I don't forgive people, I'm forsaking mercy. Amen. And I'm not, and I'm forsaking truth. Because the truth is, I got to forgive so I can be forgiven. Huh? And then when I don't receive the promise, I get upset, I get mad. Because uh, uh, the reason why I'm not receiving the promise, I'm not keeping the command. You follow me? This son, people, let me say this. I'm going to move on. Uh, people want God to be unjust and unfair in this respect. That I want to do any and everything under the sun and I want God to forgive me huh? and, and, and still bless me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have it my way like Burger King. Huh? And then I still expect God's blessing. <laughs> I'm going to take my money, put it, spin it up at the mall, but I still expect Pedelec to keep my lights on. <laughs> National Fuel Network. Whoa, you see what the wicked folk did? They came and cut off my head. It's outrageous. Huh? That's the way, that's the way we think. Uh, God is not like that. God is not mocked. Huh? We can't treat God like a fool. Uh, all right, now look. My God. Where we at? Notice what he says. He says, for length of days and long life and peace, I should, oh, okay, I'm on the wrong Verse number three, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, notice what he says, bind them about thy neck. That means uh, be chained to it. Be yoked with it. <laughs> Amen? Never forget it. Never leave home without it. Amen? Write them where? Upon the table of your what? Heart. So you now notice we, we've already established that the heart means your core being. So the wisdom 
When you put a sponge in water, it soaks up that water, right? And then when you squeeze it under pressure, what comes out? That water. Amen? So, so, so is mercy and truth. Has to be so much absorbed and sucked into you that when you're under pressure, that's all that comes out. Amen? That's all that comes out. It's your core being. God is saying that he wants mercy and truth to become a part of your core being, of who you are. I used to sing a song to my children trying to uh, instill in them, you know, to be honor roll students. And I made up that little jingle, this little silly jingle. I, I'm an honor roll student. Yes, I am. I'm an honor roll student. That's who I am. I had them sing that song uh, around the house, you know. And sure enough, they were honor roll students because they were receiving that. Huh? Honor roll students. Father, that was put in them. They received it. And, and, and because they received it, that's what came out. God wants you to receive his word. And because the, you receive it, that's what comes out. Amen? Now, let me say this. A lot of people, it'll show whether or not you have received God's word when you're under pressure. When your will starts to buck up with the will of God, then you'll know whether or not you receive the word of God. It's easy for me to walk past and uh, I got the victory over somebody smoking, somebody drinking. Huh? Somebody making sexual advances? I got victory over that. Huh? And, and, and I ain't boasting in myself. I'm boasting because I, I'm keeping in contact with the Lord. If I don't keep in contact with the Lord, I'll go back to smoking. I'll go back to drinking. I'll go back to hormonal. Amen? So it's not of my goodness. It's the goodness of the Lord. Now, the reason why I brought that out like that is that those things don't tempt me because I got victory over it. But what don't I have victory over? What am I struggling with? Huh? And, and, and that's going to be revealed. You follow me? We all struggling with something. <laughs> you follow me? And, and it's showing up when you buck up against what God requires. When, 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 when your will is in conflict with the will of God, you and you desire to do what you want to do, you know there's an issue. Amen? You know there's an issue. Thank you, Lord. So what does wisdom say? How do I overcome that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I got I to gotta resist evil. I got to humble myself. Uh, I got to study about what God's word says about it. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you. I'm getting a little bit off track. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, uh, what helps me not to be out there committing fornication and adultery? In the book of Proverbs, it tells you. Huh? That if you do this, a wound and a dishonor will you receive. Huh? When you do this, a, a, a whole host of bad things will happen to you. And I don't want all that to happen to me. Too late in the game now. Huh? I got, I got, I keep trying to say that, but I got, I got, I don't even want to say it. It's like I got one foot in the grave. If you allow me to say it. 
And it tells us, doesn't it? Huh? So if I violate God's word, then, then that uh, uh, punishment will come upon me. If I don't violate and keep God's word, then the promise will come upon me. Am I right? Am I right? God's word tells me, he said, hey, thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 and I want my brothers to hear this as well as the sisters. You know, the word of God tells me as far as my relationship with my wife, be satisfied with her. Huh? Be satisfied with her. You follow me? Brothers, y'all go get your wife. Be satisfied with your wife. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And I can get more explicit, but you know, we don't want to do that. But I got to be satisfied with her. Am I right? Enjoy her. Don't try to enjoy somebody else or somebody else's wife. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 enjoy your own house. You follow me? With the fact, I'm, I'm having more fun at sister so and so house than I'm having at my house. Lucy, there's something wrong. I get out of work, I gotta go to Sister So and So house. Maybe she got a big screen TV. <laughs> Y'all follow what I'm saying? There you go. We gotta make the right decision. Am I right? Be satisfied with what God has given you. Amen? Be content. Amen? Amen for my singles. You know, he said, possess your vessel. Huh? In sanctification and in honor. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Possess yourself. In other words, don't let yourself go down memory lane. Huh? Don't open up doors that you don't have access to. Huh? Am I right? Don't watch certain programs. Huh? That's going to work with you. <laughs> Don't do that. Am I right? That ain't showing you weak. That's showing you strong. Huh? You ain't foolish. You follow? Go with it. Thank you, Lord. We, we, we have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. That means that that wise and serpent means I gotta be quick in knowledge and understanding and wisdom. But I can't allow my knowledge and wisdom and understanding to hurt people and to harm people. You follow me? And my mother would say, You so heavenly bound, you know earthly good. Huh? I'm so holy that, that I'm excluding everybody around me. That's hurting people. Am I right? Thank you. Not a while was off all up in there. Thank you. But this is good stuff. <laughs> Amen. And and that's what you get out of that 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 verse, proverb. And and I got uh, one more verse, and we go two more verses, and we gonna go. Notice what he said. Uh, verse number three. He says, "Show sure shalt thou find." Okay. He says, "Let not mercy forsake. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee." Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of what? Thy heart. Which means your what? Ah, your core being. Your heart is not your mind. Any and everything comes to your mind, but uh, when it enters into your heart, because that's where your will is, that's what you do. You don't do everything that comes to your mind. But you do everything that enters into your heart. Y'all with me? All right. Thank you. Because Jesus said himself, out of the uh, uh, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. And then he said, it comes fornication, adulteries, and all this other kind of stuff. It comes from the heart. When people are speaking, that's in their heart. 
Amen? All right, let's move forward. Notice what he said. So when he says, write them upon the table of your heart, he's talking about make that a part of your core being, who you are. Notice, then verse number four, it says, so shall thy what? Find favor and good understanding in what? The sight of God. Now, when I'm operating, when I'm operating in mercy and truth, uh, notice what he said. I'll find favor with God because I'm, I'm extending mercy and truth. Uh, and notice, he said, and you'll have good understanding. When you stop and pause, show people mercy, and then operate in truth, understanding comes. Understanding comes. Y'all with me? Understanding comes. Now, uh, go with me real quick over uh, to chapter number four. Y'all got to say amen. Yeah. Chapter number four. Drop down to verse number seven. Notice what it says. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Notice what it says. But with, and with all thy getting, Get what? Uh, God wants you to understand. Wisdom and understanding and knowledge, they go hand in hand. Notice what he said. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the ability to apply your knowledge and understanding to a situation. That's wisdom. It's a skill. Amen? Knowledge is the accumulation of the facts. Understanding is the interpretation of what you know. Y'all with me? It's essential. If you go walk in wisdom, you have to get understanding. You follow me? You can't have wisdom without understanding. You can't have wisdom without knowledge. You with me? All right, I just got to show you one more thing. Go with me to Proverbs uh, 10. Then we're about, to, we're about to wrap this up. I believe it's... Uh, bear with me just for a moment. All right, y'all with me? Uh, drop down with me to, to verse 13. If you haven't said amen. He says, in the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. They go hand in hand. In the lips of him that has an understanding. So before you make decisions, you should try to understand what type of decision you're making. And that comes through knowledge. You got to get the facts. Amen? Go hand in hand. Now notice, he says, uh, what verse was that? 13. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. And here's, here's the negative. But a rod is for the back of him that does what? Don't avoid getting understanding. Some people don't like to study. But you're going to get a rod on your back. You're going to fall into many hurtful snares. 
You follow me? Um, I heard an individual say the other day that, that, that readers are tomorrow's leaders. I said, wow, I'm going to put that on the wall. <laughs> you got to read God's word. If you're trying to get an understanding about uh, who better to go to, he created all of this. He knows the pitfalls. He's the puppet master. Am I right? Now notice then. Uh, verse 14. Wise men lay up what? No. No. See how it is? Wise people, they get understanding. And wise people, they get what? No. Knowledge. What is knowledge? Been saying it all night. That's wisdom. Wisdom is, is when, when you apply it. Knowledge is the accumulation of the facts. Understanding is the revelation or the interpretation of the facts. When you receive the revelation, you apply it. That's wisdom. Notice what it says. A wise man layeth up knowledge, but out of the mouth of, of, uh, of the foolish is what? Near destruction. Near destruction. That's why you want to avoid a foolish person. Ah, they near destruction. I don't want to live my life on the edge. Did that, done that. <laughs> I, want, I want to be secure. It's, it's, it's amazing to me. I, uh, uh, I talk to people on a regular basis, and some say, well, you know, uh, Pastor, I'm done with all, I'm done with all these games and stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just have a secure life now. I'm done with the foolishness. Amen? So don't hang out with fools. People that are doing foolish things, you don't want to hang out with them. Amen? People that's inviting you to do foolish stuff, you don't want to hang out with them, am I right? We look like, I know I'm allergic to something, and uh, I go over to somebody's house and say, hey, you, I'm going to give you this. I'm allergic to it. It's going to kill me. Every time I go over, they offer it to me. Sooner or later, I'm going to get weak. I'm going to rationalize it in my own mind. I can have a little bit and it ain't going to hurt me. I knew it one time, God will forgive me. Everybody else doing it. Follow? That's foolish. Am I right? All right. Any questions on the Bible study? I know this may seem redundant. It may seem, <laughs> sometimes it may seem unnecessary. But it's necessary. How do you know it's necessary? Because a, a, a lot of people are struggling. And a lot of times the struggle can be avoided. There's some struggles you're going to have because of God. But those you can't avoid. All those that would live godly in Christ are going to suffer what? Persecution. Persecution. Absolutely. But I don't want to have to add sorrow on sorrow by bringing in my own troubles on top of it from disobedience. Am I right? That could be avoided if I apply God's 
word. Amen. All right. I'm good, Monique. 